Welcome back to Inti Center and another whip around Fiduce. And this week, we're going to jump right into it. Just like Northern Shore's Gale of November did, they scored six runs in the first inning and they never looked back. They absolutely smashed Siorak to open their week. Josh Gibson hit a two run homer in the first. Bob Turley walked the bases loaded, then walked two runs in. He lasts just two thirds of an inning, and the Gales don't stop scoring there. They take that game 17 to one. The Pilots only scored one in the first, but they also opened a can of whoop ass. They beat the Orange Barrels 10 to one in their season opener. Edgar Martinez and Heavy Johnson each drove in three runs. You Daly tosses seven innings, giving up one run on 10 hits. The Barrels just can't find a clutch hit in that one. They leave 17 on base. But we will talk about one close game from the eighth, and that's Madrigal and the Demon Bags. Madrigal get it going early. RBI doubles in the top of the first from King Kelly and John Riley. But that's all they get off Charlie Bender, who goes seven, gives up those two runs on seven hits, and he strikes out six. An RBI single from Albert Pujols in the third brought one home for the Demon Bags, but couldn't quite tie it up as Frank Robinson gets nailed at the plate by Paul Hines, ending the inning with Madrigal up 2-1. to one. We go to the eighth, still at 2-1, to one, and when Christy Mathewson hits Jackie Robinson with a pitch to put the leadoff man on board, Mirabelle does a little song and dance as she heads to the mound to explain why she's removing him from the game. He doesn't want to talk about it, or Bruno, but she brings in Bobby Matthews. He gives up a single. He tosses a wild pitch, then gives up a sack fly to tie the game. After an intentional walk to, to Yaz, Al Rosen gets the RBI single to finally put the demon bags on top. Kurt Schilling works around a one-out walk, but never walks back his comments about reinstituting slavery. Demon bags get the win, but not the moral victory, 3-2. to two. How about three nail-biting affairs on the ninth? Siorak and Gales hooked up for a dramatic affair. A three-run seven featuring a two-run homer from Joe DiMaggio puts the Steagle Tiger Cranes up 5-2. to two. But Northern Shore scores three in the top of the ninth to tie it. We'd head to extra innings. Bullet Rogan, a solo homer in the top of the inning. Joe Nathan works a 1-2-3 bottom. Gales November takes it six to five in the tenth. Walter Johnson and Johan Santana, they locked up in a pretty epic duel. Santana gave up one run in six innings of work, only coming on a second inning sack fly from Rig Stevenson. He was bettered by Walter Johnson, who went nine innings, giving up just one run with a seventh inning double from Al Rose and his only blemish. Corey Kluber and Kurt Schilling worked it scoreless from there, and this one would go to extras. In the 11th, the Demon Bags were looking for a third inning of relief work from Schilling, but a King Kelly single and a Billy Hamilton double showed that was a bad idea. Ron Guidry relieved, but he allowed an inherited runner to score on a sack fly, and it was 3-1 to Madrigal as we headed into the bottom of the 11th. Enter Al Orth, and an error by John Riley puts the leadoff runner on for the Demon Bags. Jackie Robinson singles. Frank Robinson pulls a Roger Dorn, gets hit by the pitch. We load the bases. Albert Pujols gets a sack fly. The lead is now just three to two. Yaz walks. The bases are reloaded. But Al Orth retires Ken Griffey and Al Rosen. The Demon Bags rally falls short, and Madrigal takes it three to two. And then we'll get more drama in Alaska. And by the way, every game on this day had some drama. I'm just not taking the time to talk about all of them. Check them out in the logs and the box scores. Just a phenomenal day for baseball. Game of throws. They get a three-run homer from Jocko Milligan in the sixth. That gives them a 4-2 lead. Only to have amazing score two in the seventh to tie it up. The inning might have had more, but Roy Campanella was thrown out trying to steal to end the inning. That gives us our 4-4 four to four score line. We take that into the ninth, where a one-out Joey Votto double combined with a two-out Bryce Harper double puts Amazings up 5-4. to four. Edwin Diaz is left in the game, which at first looks brilliant as he strikes out the first two batters of the inning, but he walks the next two, and that Finally brings on Josh Hader. 
Hader gives up a single to the pinch hitting Alex Bregman to tie the game, but he gets a ground ball to third to end the inning and send us to extras. Uh, only it's muffed by Nolan Arenado. The throws have another chance to win it in the ninth, and they take that chance. Carlos Delgado, Del got it. A walk-off single to score Arky Vaughn and give the game to Game of Throws. We head to the to the tenth on the calendar and Madrigal and Demon Bags, they feel the need to give us another thriller. Emergency starter extraordinaire Ben Sanders trying to get that emergency lifted from his title and become just a starting pitcher. He goes eight innings, gives up one run on just four hits. Fernando Valenzuela allows two run on seven hits. And the bullpens, Al Orth, Andy Pettit, Corey Kluber, keep the offenses off the board for a two-to-one win for Madrigal. Pedro Martinez gives up two runs on six hits and strikes out 10 in seven innings. But he gets out by Cliff Lee, who gave up one run on nine hits with eight strikeouts. The Barrels take the rubber match against the Pilots, two to one. And a day after the historic one nothing balk off game, would Sithy and the Bandwagoners give us another great game? You bet your ass they would. The bandwagoners got a pair of runs in the sixth on RBI singles from Joe Maurer and Derek Jeter. Sithy tie it up on the eighth on a two-run homer from Carlton Fisk. And we would stay at 2-2 two to two all the way until the 13th inning. That's when Oscar Charleston hit a solo homer off Sean's favorite whipping boy. That's right, Pete Alexander. Sithy load the bases with nobody out in the 13th, but Heath Bell relieves. Let's none of those inherited runners score and the bandwagoners take it three to two. Sean, I know you're unplugged. You'll be watching this late, but I can already hear your ears fuming at letting that one get away. Sithy, though, they love the drama right now, and they get into another one-run game as they welcome Game of Throws to town. Tim Raines triples to open the game. He comes home one batter later on a ground out. That turns out to be the only run Smokey Joe Wood allowed all game. He goes eight innings, giving up just four hits along the way. Dobby Moore with an RBI double in the second that ties the game. The only other run of the game, a bases loaded walk issued to Babe Ruth. Guy Hecker gives up those two runs on five hits in seven innings. He takes the hard luck loss. Sithy beat the Kings of the North two to one. If you want to talk drama, let's talk Baby Yoda's and Family Madrigal. Madrigal, they score three in the bottom of the eighth to tie that game at four. And then we basically play almost in another, another entire goddamn game of baseball before anyone scores again. We go all the way to the 14th inning. John Riley gets a walk-off double to score the winning, and I'll mention unearned run, as the Family Madrigal take it five to four. The story for us on June 12th is really dominant pitching performance. We already told you in the thread about how good Grasshopper Jim was in his dominant no decision. The reason it was a no decision is because Max Scherzer goes nine innings of shutout baseball. He gives up just four hits along the way. That game goes to the 12th inning. The 12th inning. And the winning run scores on an error from A-Rod. Who else? That means that in one week, in one week, Fiduce has given us two one to nothing games with no RBI in them. Literally, that's more than we've had in the entire history of Major League Baseball. Oh, Rube Waddell also had himself a day for the enhancers. He went eight innings. He gave up one run on four hits. He struck out eight. The enhancers top amazing four to one. And then Another dramatic extra inning affair from the Baby Yodas and the Family Madrigal. This time, it takes us only until the 11th to decide a winner when Scotty Riggs Stevenson gets the walk-off single doing the American Males as he hits it. Madrigal gets a 5-4 to four win that saw Baby Yoda score four in the top of the fourth, top of the first, and then get shut down the rest of the way. Last set of games. There's the theme for us. Siorak jumps out on Let's Play too early. Ralph Gar tripled to open the game, scored on a Mike Young ground out. Three more on the second, including a two-run double from Thornton Lee. 
puts the Tiger Cranes up four to nothing. They'd stay up by that four nothing score line till let's play two scores four in the eighth. Steel Tiger Cranes can only blame themselves. One run scored on an error, another on a bases loaded walk. That makes it four to four. We go to the ninth where Hank Aaron walks it off for let's play two. He singles to score the pinch running Ryan Sandberg. Let's play two takes it five to four. Same theme, similar story for Game of Thrones and Sithy. A five run first puts the Kings in the North on top early. They would stretch that lead to 7 nothing with runs in the second and the fourth. But Sithy would mount a comeback. A three-run sixth, sixth featuring a two-run homer from Babe Ruth would cut it to 8-4. to four. And a three-run Earl Averill homer in the seventh makes it 8-7. to seven. But Sithy would not complete the comeback. Dennis Eckersley and Aroldis Chapman keep them off the board in the eighth and ninth. Game of Thrones takes the game 8-7. to seven. We'll end this week with a quick back-and-forth affair between the barrels and the shores. Gales of November jump out to a quick 2-0 lead in the first. The barrels cut it to 2-1 in the second, take a 3-2 lead in the fourth. Al Simmons homers on the first pitch of the fourth. It's tied at three. A wild pitch lets another run score that inning to make it 4-3 to of the Gales. The Gales push that lead to 7-3 to in the seventh with a two-run double from Duke Snyder leading the way. But a two-run single from Buck Leonard pulls the barrels to within seven to five in the eighth. Reggie Smith hits a pinch hit, one out homer in the ninth to make it seven to six. But Joe Nathan retires Tony Gwynn, Hanley Ramirez, and the Gales hold on for a wild seven to six win. That's going to do it this week for Inti Center. We'll see you next time for another whip around Fiduce.